Hello everybody, I am Bratman19, and welcome to a brand new game and a brand new series on the channel. This is Europa Universe House 4, and we're going to be starting a brand new series as well today. Of course, this is going to be the Ottoman Campaign, and uh, it's kind of about time we started something else, right? Something a little bit newer. I think this game came out in 2013, and it's still got a very huge following online. In on YouTube, and, and I feel like uh, it's time to branch out and give this a try. It is, inc I'll go ahead and tell you right now, it is incredibly overwhelming to me right now what this game has to offer. I've been playing it for probably about six months, trying to understand it. Believe me, I still don't. I don't really think anybody except for the creators still fully understand this game. And uh, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I've tried it a, quite a bit. I've gotten frustrated a number of times. And I think, though, the best way to do this is to start recording it and just show it to you guys as best we can. So, again, though, I've chosen the Ottomans this time, our little country here. And I guess kind of like a limish green color right here. Um, they are pretty much, I think they have been the, are the ultimate starter nation from what I've been told. But I am working with all the DLCs, including the latest one. The Cradle of Civilization expansion. So uh, apparently that changed up a lot of stuff in the Mesopotamian and Middle East region. So uh, who knows how that's affected that. So we are going to do the Rise of the Ottomans as the Ottomans. There we go. We're going to start. Let's see. They are a kingdom rank. They are Anatolian technology. They are Sunni. Or Sultanate. Uh, we have a... We have Sultan Mehmed II, Fatih, that is our leader. He is a 646 uh, in administrative, diplomatic, and military skills. Our administrative level is 3, diplomatic is 3, and military is 3. Uh, we have quite a bunch of good uh, ideas, so uh, I think it's about time we just go ahead and start her up. And we're going to do it just on normal. We will not do, be doing Iron Man mode for quite a while. I'm pretty excited about this. I, uh... I'm not sure... Oh, okay, here we go. We're starting this little thing. Now, this is new to me, so... Let's see. The Ottomans in 1444 are a regional power in the process of securing control over Anatolia and the Balkans. In the east, Ottoman control has been reimposed in the aftermath of the Timurid invasion, but several Beyliks remain independent. These bay jockey for a position between the expanding power of the Ottomans on one side and the Mamluk Empire of Egypt and Syria, still the strongest state in the Middle East on the other. In Europe, the Ottomans had defeated the Crusaders in the Battle of Varna, killing Vladislaw, the Polish and Hungarian king. Byzantium now lies exposed, and Hungary has been forced on the defensive, but with the fortress of Belgrade still serves as a great as a strong bulwark against further Ottoman expansion. The lesser princes in between can survive only by playing the great powers off one another. Further south, Skanderbeg leads Albania in revolt against the Ottomans, supported by Venice, which still dominates the seas. The realm ruled by the Ottoman dynasty is not yet a centralized state in 1444. The Sultan's authority is enforced only by his small household of servants, recruited from slaves captured in war and from the Devshirmi, the periodic conscription of Christian youth from the Balkan countryside. These are the famous Janissaries, who still who will in time grow into a powerful standing army. The Ottomans have come to power with the military backing of numerous marcher lords, still highly autonomous on the Balkan frontier, while the administration lies in the hands of the Turkish aristocracy, literate in the ways of statecraft, but largely independent of the Sultan's authority. All this is about to change. Having defeated the Crusader armies, the old Sultan, Murad II, is now on his way back to his estates in Manissa leaving the government in the hands of the young Mehmed II. It is he who will go on to transform the Ottoman state into an empire, acquiring Constantinople as an imperial capital and establishing a centralized administration to reign in the marcher lords and old Turkish families. For the Grand Turk, there can be no compromise. The House of Osman is to be the supreme authority in the land. The only question is this, where will his armies turn to first? Okay, sounds good. Um... It's just tell me how many I have down here. Of course, our religion, our Sunni, we get a 100% chance of a new heir and then 10% to uh, cavalry to infantry ratio. Just a little stuff like that that helps you make your military a little bit better. Kind of telling us about our monarchies and how that works. And the environment of Europe at this time. Um, 
So the game's paused. I just want to make sure of that before I kept going. It is 1444. This is the earliest start point you can get in this game. At least in the base game, not in any mods. Um, it runs through, I want to say, 1821. And you can go through it pretty quickly uh, if you're running at full speed. But we won't be running at full speed really all that long. So anyway, so we've got these little things down here, these little flags. So we're going to go ahead and pick out some of these. This is I have too few rivals. So it says here, Hungary, Lithuania, and Austria are my main rivals right now. I can choose any of these guys. Um, let's see. I want to choose my first person to be... Probably Venice. That would be my first one. Um, Mamlix will be my second one. And then my third one will be, let's see, who do I want? Lithuania. That's probably the better of the, that's probably the okay one there. And I, if some of you guys have already seen this game or played this game before, you know a lot of what I'm going to be telling people. This is just for the brand new people who have never seen this game. Uh, at the top, we've got our uh, stuff like our treasury, our manpower, sailors, stability, which can go negative three or plus three, uh, anywhere in that round. Corruption, which we have none right now, thankfully. Uh, prestige, which is generally trending towards zero, as I found. Legitimacy, which you want as high as possible. And power projection, the same thing. As it increases what's down here, which are your power points, as I call them. I don't know if that's the exact wording or not. Uh, but uh, this is administrative power. Diplomatic power and military power. The more of this you have, the more you can do for technologies, which we'll talk about later. Uh, I don't think we want to do anything with advisors right now. We are making... Well, I'm making 1264 a turn. We have quite a few truces. Let's see. Let's go with national decisions. Okay, so we can adopt the title of Khalifa. That will give us... We have a ruler of at least three. That gives us 10 towards legalism. Can't think, I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. Um, the announcement of sect practices gives us 10 more. But we also get negative 1 to the national unrest. That's good. Ministry Street versus Heretics. Yep, we want that to go up too. We'll lose 100 military power for expanding the Devon Sheree. We get a national manpower modifier of plus 10. Might hold off on that one for now. And we wanted to pick, uh, pick a mission. We can go after Constantinople, but I think instead I'm going to start with Dulcadir here. We want to improve relations with Dulcadir. Which means we just got to get to 100. Dulcadir is these guys. Let's go ahead and do an influence. Nope, that's not the one. There we go. Relations. There we go. Improving relations. Uh, I can convert some places. Hmm. Let's do that. Okay, I think we're finally ready to start. I'm going to put it on two, and we're going to run from here. Time will not go by super fast. All right, so while this is going on, we have quite a bit going on over here. We have an army of ten and three. Oops. There have just been some raids going on. Ships. I'm gonna put these guys over here. These guys here. And our guys are just gonna travel between. Uh, there's nothing that we can do about this. As the Ottomans, we get all, we basically we're gonna find out a lot about what's going on around us, with little bitty nations joining trade leagues and stuff like that. It's they're not big deals. At least not right off the bat. They can be later on. We're getting quite a bit per month, actually. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay. Who do I have truces with? Karaman, who is here. Royal marriage from Duke Dulcadir. There you go. Let's just go ahead and take it. Um, Venice, the Papal State, Poland, Lithuania, Hungary. So I'm not... Anything with the Byzantines. 
Okay. Um. Just seeing who all I have around me. If they desire our land, then they're not going to have a really good chance of uh, being able to be incorporated into us very easily. Ramazan. Hold on just a second. Let me see. Where is Ramazan? Right here. Let's accept that, and let's go ahead and improve relations. It's gonna be improved by 95 more, over here can be improved by 83 more. Just by becoming friends with these people we can become, they could desire Siva, Trebizon. Huh. We get negative 20. We do get border friction. Let's try just being friendly with Trebizond. How about that? Okay, let's let her run. Now then, how are my... We're at 28 of 38. Army force limit. You can only have a certain amount of army before you start incurring penalties. So, I like to have a pretty good little starting army... I don't like that five. Let's go ahead and separate these guys. I want... Venice declared war against Serbia. An alliance from Ramazan will take. Okay. Uh, as for you, you've now got 10 and 4. You're going to have 10 and 4. So I want you to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 new armies are going to get built. No, I don't want to work with either of you. Neither of you will get what you want. Let's go ahead and take these, and we're going to merge them into one group. Let's see here. One, two, three, four. Nice. Provincial unrest in Sivas. It's probably because we're trying to convert them. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. We do have this thing over here called the Outliner. It gives me just a quick little update about what's going on. Um, see how we're approving relations with people. And tell us where our merchants are. Our army side, our armies here. Navies, estates, which are different groups of people. Uh, the missionaries, and how well they're doing. Rebel factions, which that's very important to keep an eye on. As well as recruitment. Let's see. Take them 26.8 years to get that going. Okay. Not that big a deal. I think this guy's going to have what? There we go. 18. Let's see. Do I use them all up? Yes, I did. Okay, local autonomy seems to probably be okay. Alright, not bad. Nice little start, just becoming friends with some of these guys. How much money am I making now? 2.97. Let's switch to this instead so we get across the board as close as we can to the about flat amount. Uh, this is going to cost me yearly inflation reduction, which I don't really care about that. Let's do that. Military advisor next. There you go. 
too few rivals. Looks like they kicked the Lithuanians out. Um, Hungary is a good one. We do border them barely. Could that be because Poland Lithuania became like their... Yeah, okay, that's why. Lithuania became a junior partner of Poland. So I think that means that they're not allowed to have their own rivals. Yep, that's exactly what it means. That's the first little step to getting the Poland-Lithuanian Commonwealth, though, by the way. Okay, are you still friends? Yes, your ally with Byzantium, which is down here and over here. Other oh, vassals. Or Circassia. Over here. I don't know if they'll remain friends or not. Okay, Dolkadir, do you want to. I don't have anybody to send. Well, that's not good. I like to offer them an alliance, but let's wait this just a second. Get the we'll get the tick. Here it goes. Okay. Wait for him. Wait for him. It's gonna take five more days for them to come back. Then we'll offer an alliance. There you go. We did get that. I wait for 12 March to get here. Um, let's go ahead and do City of the World's Desire, which means we're going to get ready to go to war with Byzantium. Let's go ahead and start improving relations here again. Nope, that's not what I want. Um, Just gotta fix some of this up for them to be wanting to be a vassal. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, and once this guy comes back, we'll declare war. Take Constantinople. Let's confirm. There we go. Whoops, I should probably send these guys in. Make sure I give them the leader. Really don't know what this does. I, I haven't learned that part yet. Okay, they are fighting. The quicker we take them down, the better. So they had a very good roll. Okay, um, pull this guy out. There you go. Move this guy around. And we'll come down here and handle these guys. Now, I'm not going to try to really blob out. Most people who play the Ottomans in their first few times really blob out, and I'm not after that. Okay. Move forward. Now, 
Now I know some of y'all are probably looking at this like, oh, I'm making all these rookie mistakes. Yes, I'm making rookie mistakes, and I know it. Or I should say better, I understand that I will be doing that. And please do understand that's something I, I, I know I'll be doing it. It's okay. I am learning the ropes as I go here. You know, I shouldn't have 20,000 men sitting on a, sitting on this base. Should probably detach the siege. Let's move him back over here. Okay, um... Here you are. Create a new unit. Give me these. Select this unit. Move them back here. Okay, that's Venetian. And that's Naxos. Okay. Let's detach the siege and let's work our way over here. We'll take Ikea, uh, Ikea here. And then we'll move on to uh, Morea. Over here in Thessaly. Pull these together. So the way sieges work is that you have to have at least the number required, like required up to the uh, fort level, which a fort level here is three. Well, you have to have at least uh, nine thousand. You have to have three times that. So three times three is nine. Oh, um, a new consort. That's fine. And then you have to. And then if you put plus one more on top of it, you'll easily. Uh, break down the uh, fort there. Like over here, it's a fort level of one, so I only have three. So I don't have that little comfort on top, should things go bad, but that's okay. We're going to send these guys into here. Athens and Byzantium have uh, some troops there. Hopefully, we, well, we do have our leader, so we should fight better. Watching the numbers tick down. And we stat wiped them, that's good. There are these things called stack wipes. Okay, let's move out. And we'll let these guys kind of raid this. Oh, they already did it. Okay. Trying to save troops. And there's little bitty things here you can look at. So, here's kind of what the siege view looks like. A nice little description showing things. Uh, we'll see the difference when we go to Athens here. Oh, actually, we see it now. See a little break in the wall there now. Up here, there is no break in the wall. Just stuff like that in that view. Uh, we can see the morale of the defenders. We can see how many defenders there are. We can see the fort level. Uh, we can see their defense. You know, the regiments needed to take it which is six, we've got seven, so we should be good in case there's any th any bad things that happen to us. See how long the phase progress is. All the all the little tributes that you have towards beating it. Uh, modifier right now with walls breached gives us plus one. And then we have like die roll to see what we got. Then you have your chance to uh, make it fall. As you can see, it's like negative 42% here, but it's negative 14 in Athens. And then we could, of course, you know, order an assault. It would cost us lives to do it. I don't want to do that. I just would rather build up our forces. There you go. And if you have a disease outbreaks, it can... It's like a certain percentage. I think like 10% or something like that of your men. So you definitely don't want to have a whole bunch of guys sitting here. You'll waste manpower really quickly. And manpower is a big deal. Now it's just a waiting game. Let's increase the speed just a little bit. Okay, um... We'll lose 5 prestige, it's not that big a deal. You definitely want to keep, keep hold of your power here. Let's 
guy is almost done. He's at 21%. It goes from negative 50 to, or negative like 75 to, or negative 100 to plus 100. I, I, these are just chances for them to give up. So there's a negative 35% chance here. But there's a 35% chance here. There's a 0%, which, but we should trend upward. Hopefully. There you go. See, now there's a 7% chance. In the next turn, they'll give up. This just, just means the better rolls you're getting. Now I'm doing my best to explain this as we go. <laughs> there's a lot to pay attention to. Okay. These three are going. Twenty-eight, thirty-five, fourteen. Okay, this guy's not giving up for anything. Okay, we'll wait it out. Thirty-five, thirty-five, fourteen. Okay, still the same across. Oh, we are at war with Sarkagia too. That's okay. Siege of Athens is now over. That's what Siege Land looks like. But we now have Constantinople and Morea. Monetary reforms, let's go ahead and slow this down. Our treasurers are, treasurers are arguing that we need to enact some reforms in our economic policies. A new master of mint will also be needed to take care of the economy. We can gain three inflation. We don't have any inflation or we can lose stability. Let me tell you, stability is very important. It's almost up there with power, so I'll go ahead and just do gain three inflation. That's okay. We'll be able to fight it over time. this play out all right put these guys together now then we need to probably try to look at getting a way to win this war finally low low and high Sarkaja probably doesn't really want anything of this okay we'll just work with you guys then um I want Athens Constantinople, Achaia. Are you going to give me Moria? Nope. Huh. Oh, you just won't let me beat you completely. Hmm. Could I get to the... Well, no, I probably couldn't. I don't know about my... Where are my ships? Hmm. Yeah, I'm a little worried about our ships. I don't think our ships could get us where we need them to be, which would be up here. Um, let's just try for the best one we can get. I want these three. We'll leave Byzantium, this little piece of Morea, and we'll come back for it. Um, in the meantime, if that's the case. No, I can't make them into a vassal. They can pay me war reps, which means they'll be giving me more money each month. Let's see. They'll give me 81. Okay, that's a good demand. There we go. They lost 16,000 men. We lost 8,808. Fine, fine, okay. And now this land is now all ours, which means that we've got some work to do. So they, we have these things called cores, which means that we own the land. So I'm just going to make everybody a core using uh, administrative power. This thing here. It takes some time, but it prevent, it's, it's to stop this thing called overextension, which is bad. Okay, defeated the Byzantine. 
Hmm. Let's do rival of our rival. The Timurids. Way out here. Whoops, sh shouldn't be doing that. Okay, let's look at this. Make Constantinople the capital. We have one stability, four base tax, four base production, three. Yeah, okay. Constantinople is now part. It actually just gave us a, a free core on that. So I could have definitely held off on that. That's okay, though. Move these guys back in. And I'm going to take this guy. Whoops. Uh, out of camp. There we go. Nasty things can happen to your people in camp. And we're making good money. Let's go ahead and give somebody else a chance here. Um, prove relations is probably better than spy network construction. There we go. And we gotta let our manpower recover. These sailors here used to not mean anything. I haven't played in a couple since the new DLC came out, so I'm not sure. It used to not mean anything at all. And it's gonna take us till May 1450, which is about two years for both of these. Let's see, how's religion going? I do have multiple other choices. Vedan, Balibadra, some other stuff. Anything that's got a number in this column means that I can do it. The rest of them mean it won't. Which a lot more will open up as I get these unity this unity up. Missionary strength plus three plus ten. That's what that stuff means. Mysticism works for missionary strength and morale of armies. Morale's really good. Or national tax modifier and manpower. This is probably the better one. Legalism, just in my opinion. I like having a strong economy. I like having a lot of men and I like having uh, less technology cost. Even though I do like morale of armies and missionary strength, it only missionary strength only counts when not everybody is your current thing, so... That's okay. Just gonna put these guys together. Are we working on Dolkadir? Yes, we are. We can't improve it anymore. We sure have royal ties, have an alliance. Dang, I'll, negative six. What's holding us back? Economic base compared to them. I want to make them into a vassal. Hmm. I guess I could increase my military power over time. How's it looking now? Oh, we could add three. Let's add two first. There we go. Oh, Trev is on. They got a ways to go. Could offer them... Okay, well, never mind. Trebizond would not be a good one. Ramazan would take an offer, uh, a vassalization offer. Keep improving its relation. We can do it by 48 more, and that should be pretty close. So we'll see how that works. But all right, guys, I am going to have to end it right here. It wasn't a bad first episode. Uh, we did get Constantinople back. We've limited Byzantium, this little bitty piece of Thessaly. 
Uh, we are working on fixing overextension. We've got a, two pretty good little armies here, keeping them around 20 each. So yeah, so alright guys, I appreciate y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Maybe check out Discord, and I will see you all next time.